Welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. I hope you are all well. It's time to conclude the review for the Wharfdale Linton Heritage Hi-Fi speakers that I've been listening to and enjoying for the last few weeks. And I want to make this review conclusion quite a deep dive type of video because I actually think these are excellent speakers and they're excellent speakers for very real world money, for very real world people to be used in very real world situations. Because they deliver so much for the price point, they deserve you know a deep dive type of review. So go and get yourself a tea or a coffee, a coke or a wine and come back and settle in for what's gonna be quite a lengthy but detailed and hopefully worthwhile review. If you've just joined us for this review, this is actually video number three in a very comprehensive review video series. Now part one or video one was an introduction where I talk about the speakers in a little bit of detail and show a few things. And then I think of interest to some of you will be video number two, which is a sound demonstration video. So I show the room that I've used to review them in, the bits of kit that I've used to review these speakers, the type of music that I've been listening to, and really the type of sound quality that I've achieved from the speakers. So I keep mentioning it, the price. The Wharfdale Linton Heritage speakers cost £999, which I'm sure you will agree is you know, a very modest price for a very lovely looking three-way, three-driver speaker system. And then we have the matching stands, which if you buy them separately, cost £279. And the build quality and the quality of those stands, they are worth every penny of that £279 price. However, if you buy the speakers and the stands combined, which you should do, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, then the price gets reduced to £1,099, which means you're essentially getting the speaker stands for £99, which is insane value for money. That is a deal that is too good to be true, really, but definitely too good to turn down. So don't turn it down. If you buy the speakers, definitely buy the stands as well, because the stands will not only put the speakers at the exact right height for your listening, but it just sets off the overall look and aesthetic and design of the speaker system as a whole. And those speaker stands are also a very cool way to store your vinyl. <laughs> Now to me, the Wharfdale Lintons as a speaker system look like quite a simple design, but it's simplicity done very well. Wharfdale have used nice quality veneers. There is nice quality speaker cable binding posts, and even the speaker grills are very well made and feel really nice in your hands. And the speakers themselves, they feel reasonably heavy, but they feel solid, inert, and extremely well built. Then we have the build quality of the matching stands. They are incredibly well built. They come assembled, they are really heavy, they are really solid, and they are really inert. Even the spike system that they use, these really quite large spikes, that even makes the leveling process of the stands really quite easy and that is something that I really appreciated. Then I want to talk to you about the speaker's design because clearly they are a classic designed speaker with that obvious retro cool look appeal. But there is a lot more to the speaker's design than that. Really these are a throwback and a celebration for Wharfdale's 85 plus years of speaker manufacturing. And the Wharfdale Lintons are very much a throwback to the original Linton speakers that were made and sold in the 1960s and the 1970s. And if you go on eBay, you can see you have those original speakers being sold. And it's really quite interesting when you look at the originals from an aesthetic and then you look at these new Wharfdale Lintons, you can very much see lots of the elements of the design moving across. That is at least from the outside. The new Wharfdale Lintons have been brought very much 
up to date with their design, driver technologies and crossover and more. Wolfdale Linton Heritage are a rear-ported three-way, three-driver speaker. They feature an eight-inch base driver and a five-inch mid-range driver. Both are made from a black woven Kevlar material. Now the tweeter is a one-inch fabric-based or really what we would call a soft dome tweeter. And interestingly, when you look at the speakers, you can see the tweeters have been offset and that is all on purpose and part of really an overall clever tweeter design. The speakers are designed to be set up with the tweeters on the inside, so really more on access to the listener. For those of you who prefer to not wear underwear, sorry, I've got bad news for you. The Wharfdale Lintons are designed to be listened to and used with their speaker grills on. This is all part of a clever and overall designed tweeter system. So there is a tweeter and there is a tweeter grill and then there is the main speaker grill. And all of those work in tandem to help with the dispersion and directivity of the tweeter to avoid any interaction with the parts of the speaker cabinet which protrude in front of the speaker baffle. Wharfdale's use of larger drivers is partly a throwback to speakers from back in the day which generally all used bigger drivers, but they also want to use the benefit of bigger drivers and bigger baffles to help improve their efficiency. The speaker cabinet is a clever sandwich of high density chipboard with MDF skins and that helps to scatter internal resonances better than just using plain MDF. And then the crossovers within the these new Wharfdale Linton speakers very much take advantage of modern computer-aided design to help perfect them and get better performance. Now for the setup of the Wharfdale Lintons, I had them placed in roughly an equilateral triangle. Now I figured with a soft dome tweeter, it would make more sense to have the speakers facing more at me, as a starting point at least, and that seemed to work really very well. Doing some listening, when I felt like I had the speakers roughly in the right position, I spent about an hour or so just working on the left speaker. It was possible to get a really clean and clear, big solid center image, which could quite easily be lost if the speaker was slightly too far back or slightly too far forward. And I only did it with the one concentrating on the left speaker. And after, I say, only about an hour, I was able to get what I felt was a really nicely time-aligned pair of speakers, which created a very nice overall sound mix, which we'll talk about more in a minute. For amplification, I started the review with the very high-performing Chord Electronics stack of the Chord Electronics Hugo M Scaler with the Hugo TT2 and then the T-Toby amplifier. I went into the review expecting the speakers to sound very stereotypical, warm, and maybe quite old-fashioned in their presentation, but with the Chord Electronics stack that couldn't be any further from the truth. The Wolfdale Lintons were sounding fast, they were sounding precise, they were sounding clean, really very accurate type sounding speakers and this completely threw me it was not what i was expecting at all for the better definitely for the better the sound from the speakers and the system set up like this was very impressive in a lot of ways but i found the mid-range to be on the leaner side and the general bass presentation to be on the leaner side and had i kept this system and this sound throughout this review i probably would have felt that adding some subwoofers to the Wolfdale Lintons would have been a good idea. It made sense at this point to change amplifiers over to Arcam's new SA30, which on paper has quite a bit more power than Cord Electronics T-Toby. <laughs> So with the Arkham SA30 and some work with Dirac Live, really the sound of the Wolfdale Lintons did change quite a lot. Then they sounded more 
maybe as I expected them to with a warmer, more easygoing and more relaxed type of presentation. Not as clear, precise and clean sounding as with the full cord electronics stack, but definitely a more full, more full mid-range and a more full overall bass. So really quite an interesting experience to listen to the speakers sounding quite different through the two different systems. And following that, I used the Wharfdale Lintons to review two different products. The 432 Evo reference music server, the standard edition server, at about 2,500 pounds, down to the iFi Audio Zen Blue, 129 pound Bluetooth based streaming DAC. And the Wharfdale Lintons sounded very different using those two different hi-fi components and really two different sources. So I took a lot from that in terms of just how transparent the Wharfdale Lintons are. Now I don't mean necessarily transparent in the sense that they just completely disappear and leave you with a full-on you know, holographic type of sound presentation. That's not really where their strengths lie. Don't get me wrong, they're not bad in that regard and they're much better in that regard than I was expecting them to be, but I wouldn't say they would be speakers you would buy for that type of presentation. But I do feel that they are extremely transparent to the source and the signal and the amplifier and the general sound quality that you feed into them. And they deliver this transparency telling you the truth about the system quality that you're feeding into them in a very communicative way, but maybe more forgiving than other speakers will be, with the exception of the treble. Now, I found it quite easy to make the treble from the Wharfdale Linton sound a little bit overly crispy. Now, I must say an amplifier that would have been fantastic to have here to use with the Wharfdale Lintons, because I think that would have really pushed them and probably got the best out of them, would have been the Luxman L509X, with that really big and bold and rich and lush really lovely organic sound presentation. It would have been you know, a fantastic amplifier to use with the Wharfdale Linton. So looking more closely at the specific sound quality from the Wharfdale Linton speakers, it's very clear and obvious that the mid-range and the vocal really presentation is very much the star of the show from these speakers. It can be big, it can be clean, it can be smooth, it can be very, very detailed, very clear and communicative, with fantastic resolution. And I'm gonna use the example of Melody Gardot and how she uses vibrato in her voice. And I'll give you an example of that here. The, rain. the vocal and mid-range aspects from the Wolfdale Linters was extremely impressive and just totally engaging. And that was probably the most transparent aspect of their performance, a lovely clean and clear vocal that just sits itself there ready for you to enjoy. Now that big, clear and clean and enjoyable vocal does come with a slightly forward type of presentation where the music really comes out to you. But part of that with the speakers is very nice sound staging left to right and some really quite impressive sound staging going from the speakers out to the listener with lovely kind of panning and other types of really impressive effects. And I think the slightly forward type of presentation is very much a get you going, get you in the groove, get your head bobbing and your foot tapping type of presentation. And I think that then makes you more forgiving of some of maybe the imperfections of the system's quality or system's delivery, or maybe even the speaker's delivery and quality in favor of just enjoying and being involved in the music that you're listening to. But the Wharfdale Lintons are not the best imaging speakers that I've had in my listening room. Doing a comparison with my usual speakers, the Kef Reference 3, which bear in mind the price difference between these two speaker systems, using the example of maybe a, a background choir. Now a speaker system like the Kef Reference is gonna try and give you the individual singers from a choir separated out. Whereas the Wharfdale Lintons will try and give you the overall energy and presence and delivery of that choir. And you would think that there was one right answer and one wrong answer to that. And I actually don't think there is. I just think it's a different way of presenting the same music. And when you get given the full choir as opposed to individual singers of a choir, it seems to come over with more energy and more, if I use the word life, I don't know if that's necessarily the right descriptive term, but definitely more energy compared to when it's separated, maybe softened 
slightly. So again, it's just a different way of presenting the information to you as the listener. And, you know, I actually took a lot from the way the Wharfdale Lintons presented that sound to me. It's definitely something that has got me interested to try and look at more from different speakers going forwards. <laughs> I think the treble from the Wharfdale Lintons is actually very nicely integrated with the mid-range. I think the Wharfdale speaker designers have done an excellent job of that integration, and I think they've done an excellent job of understanding the balance of what the speakers can deliver, probably its strengths, probably its limitations, and then I think they've very much worked to the strengths of the speaker, and minimized you know, its weaknesses, and I think the treble is very much part of that and how that's integrated. Yes, it's ever so slightly rolled off, but not as rolled off as you might expect. But it's just quite a, an easygoing, delicate type of treble that again forms part of a nice overall balance of sound from the speakers. And then we have the bass from the Wharfdale Lintons, which is really quite an interesting one. And it's got me really sitting on the fence in regards to things because the bass from the Wharfdale Lintons is very tight, and very controlled and really quite composed. It very much sounds like a larger driver that's taking it easy as opposed to a smaller driver that's really working hard to deliver its sound. And you can really hear that it's something that's very obvious to hear straight away. Now I would say there probably is just about the right amount of bass from the Wharfdale Lintons for most real world people or audio files and most real world rooms and situations. And again, talking about that balance, that overall balance, you know, the speaker designers from Wharfdale understanding what the speaker can deliver in terms of bass, balancing that with the mid-range output and then with the treble. Overall, it's a very nicely balanced overall speaker. But does that mean it's necessarily the right balance for you as an audio file or for me? in this situation and my room and conditions and situations and expectations. Now, I like a lot of bass as part of music. I think it's a really important part of an overall sound delivery. I made a whole video about this recently and I'll obviously link that video up there for you to go and check out if it's of interest. You know, I felt like I was able to get, with a bit of work, enough bass to just about satisfy me from the Wharfdale Lintons, it would have been interesting to use a different type of amplifier to see whether feeding more, more power and more quality would have delivered a more substantial bass from them. So I'm kind of on the fence of it being just enough for me, probably more than enough for most people, but the bass is very, very tight and very controlled. So that bit is extremely impressive. But what I definitely want to point out, because I know people can sometimes misunderstand or misinterpret what you mean when you explain something, the Wharfdale Lintons are definitely not bass shy speakers. And as you can see from the measurements in my room, they're certainly not bass shy when it comes to extension either. So I think to summarize the general sound quality of the Wharfdale Lintons, overall from an everyday type of listening experience, they have settled themselves into my review system very easily and very nicely. And I've listened to them for all different types of systems, music styles, and different things that we have to go through as part of a review and testing and messing around with quite a lot of new equipment. And even through all of that and everything that I've asked of them, not once have I felt the urge to want to take them out of my review system and replace them with something else. And you know, you can take from that what you will, but to me, that means quite a lot to me. So for my final thoughts of the Wharfdale Linton Heritage speakers, I actually really like them a lot. I like them much, much more than I ever thought that I would do. I didn't think this type of classic speaker design would be for me, but they've actually shown me some things which you know, I didn't realize would be as appealing to me as they are, and they're definitely things that I want to look at in the future from different speakers. And I would say I really like everything about them. I really like how they look, I really like how they sound, I really like how I had them set up and how easy it was to have them set up that way. And most importantly, I think I really like how much they cost. 
I actually thought about the performance and the sound quality that I've achieved from them, and it's not at the same level as much more expensive speakers, but it's not a million miles away from the sound quality that I've had from much more expensive speakers, and still as good, and sometimes a little bit better in some regards as well, which is outstanding really in general, and definitely outstanding for the money. So I actually decided to award the Wharfdale Linton Heritage Speakers, our highest accolade, which is the Serious Performer Award, because I actually think these are really seriously high-performing speaker system, obviously to a certain level and to a certain point, but that point is much higher than you would expect for an overall speaker system costing £1,099 if you include the stands. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this full really review series. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button. It's really helpful to the channel to help us grow. Thanks very much for watching this video right until the end. I hope it's been helpful and useful and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.